let's discuss self-defense, fitness, diet, environment, your empowerment. Hosted by your very own O'Shane Bryant. Resistance training reduces both anxiety and depression symptoms. Idea Health and Fitness Association. As per the article, eight weeks of resistance training, consistent with current exercise guidelines, led to clinically meaningful large reductions in depressive symptoms among young adults. For people with both depressive symptoms and generalized anxiety issues, resistance exercise also alleviated generalized anxiety symptoms. The amount of strength gains through the resistance exercise training was not linked to a reduction in depressive, in depressive or anxiety symptoms. It was deeply, or rather, it was simply a positive side effect. If you are not new to exercise, it shouldn't be new to you that exercise has been said to elicit positive benefits uh, in the context of our mental health. So when we're now going to look at this news, why really is this news? Um, why is the case that this pilot study being done? So th those are questions that, that, that surface. But here's a, the thing that we need to look at where it comes to this piece of news that is presented. Um, there are a lot of ambiguity and it's a case where it also can be said that it is still um, generalized in the context of what it is that is being said or shared. So it is, it is a case where the variables that are being expressed in this article include one, that the, 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 the target audience or the subjects are young, healthy adults. Two, that the, the generalized guidelines, exercise guidelines, and I will believe that these are exercise guidelines specific for resistance exercise or resistance training, um, are to be adhered to over the eight-week period for these large benefits to be experienced. Um, having said that, it is also said through this, this study that there isn't that great of a connection between strength gains and, let's just say, uh, depressive slash anxiety um, reduction benefits. So, if that's the case, how should it be a case that you know you should take this 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 news? Um, I am I'm going to say to you, especially from the angle of a fitness professional, that what you should take away is that yes, resistance training can help you to feel better, and this sense of feeling that emotional benefit can to some degree transfer into you know some benefits in the context of i would believe anxiety benefits and depressive benefits having said that before my statements can be taken um in its entirety as gospel backing up should be provided for the context of this discussion i am not doing so so I am imploring you to go ahead and do your, your own research to validate that for sure, you know, exercise and resistance exercise at that can actually benefit you in the context of reducing depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms. Um, here it is that what it is that I've shown or what it is that I'm, I'm presenting to you are the general resistance training benefits as per the America College of Sports Medicine, which is one of the premier 
um, institutions, training institutions for fitness professionals such as myself um, within the United States. So you observing this, this, this image, what this should do is, or how it should actually be utilized is as a guideline for you to understand how you should approach your resistance training towards having some form of benefit as per being expressed in the pilot study of this, this discussion here, right? Um, critical elements of the resistance training is the reps, eight to 12 repetitions. Um, you train in a way where you are targeting large muscle groups. You are not training the same way or the same muscle groups on two consecutive days, so allowing rest, a rest day in between. Um, you targeting resistance training for a minimum of two days weekly. Those are the general guidelines for resistance training as per the American College of Sports Medicine. Um, what you can then do is you can then utilize yourself in a way where you are recording your feeling before the session, day one, and you can also record your feeling after the session of each day. And let's just say at the end of a period, and we, you can use the same period as per expressed in the article, eight weeks. You can then go back over the day-to-day, -day, over the period, and assess for yourself how or the frequency that you would have experienced um, the positive benefits at the end of the exercise session and use that as your marker for yourself in determining how much you are actually being you know, rewarded through the resistance exercise in the context of feeling better. And if it's a case that you do experience depression or and or anxiety symptoms, you can also begin to validate that for yourself. Um, but yes, you know, as I said, this, 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 this article is, in my opinion, just one of the many, it adds to the many articles that exist that surround the whole discussion of exercise, physical exercise, um, posing or providing mental benefits as well. This article still is very ambiguous. Um, it being a pilot study, there is still a lot more research that's needed. And um, yes, it's only specific to quote-unquote, young, healthy adults. So it's not really indicating what the young is. And um, obviously, there are adults that are um, not considered as healthy adults, adults who are what we consider as being moderate risk and um, severely risk or high risk based on the medical conditions and the number of medical conditions he or she may have. So just use this as a marker.